Rick Parkhill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and, say, and uh, welcome to Orlando, everybody. Um, how many of you flew in yesterday? Or dropped in yesterday? You have a flight like mine? It's like, oh, we're up or down? It's like the floor came out. It was unbelievable. Scott, uh, still shaking from that experience, aren't you? So listen, welcome to Orlando and the first ever uh, Videonomics Summit. Um, see if this clicker works. Hey, it does. So uh, before I get into this, you know, I really want to say thank you to the sponsors once again. And the presenting sponsors this morning, uh, ABC and you, me. You know, I mean, here we are at the Ritz-Carlton. Uh, this event is really made possible by our sponsors. We can't thank them enough. So this morning, the presentations from the uh, supporting sponsors were the presenting sponsors, you, me, and ABC. Um, very much appreciated. You know, I, I made the mistake years ago of, of saying, you know, because of our sponsors, we're able to have this event in this, in this nice posh hotel. We don't have to be at a, like a Howard Johnson's or something. And I introduced the, the first speaker as a, the SVP ascendant who quickly pointed out that Howard Johnson's was one of their properties. And really sorry. Anyway, we're very happy to be at the Ritz, and we thank our sponsors for doing that. And funny that we're in Orlando, huh? We're uh, Time Warner's time machine for the future video. How many people remember this? They remember you know, the promise of interactive television uh, in the early 90s. You remember this, Jeff? Maybe you'll talk about it. Um, it, it, it certainly made a point with me, and at the time, I, I was so bullish on, on the fact that TV was about to go interactive that I, I, I started a magazine called Response TV. And the, the first cover of that publication was a woman ordering ski apparel with an infrared clicker on a, on a TV screen. We had no idea what interactive TV was going to look like, but we thought you'd be able to order stuff at least, you know. So I launched this magazine in advance of... Time Warner's interactive full-service network launching, um, which unfortunately didn't work so well. Uh, but my magazine made it really, uh, it was a big hit because interactive television did happen at the time. It just took two appliances. It took a TV set and a telephone. And home shopping um, soared at that time, and QVC and HSN and Infomer. And I, I somehow backed into this direct response television business that was very fortuitous for me, but my vision was completely wrong. Um, I thought interactive TV was on its way, and in fact, Time Warner did too. Um, but it was only 18 months later that, oops, they had to shut it down. Um, so somebody forgot to tell the folks at Time Warner that there was this thing coming that Al Gore was working on uh, called the internet, and really didn't have to develop these set-top boxes and, and, uh, and, and invest in all that crazy technology because, you know, gee, Al, I forgot to tell Jerry. <laughs> I, the Internet's coming. That's, that's one of my WTF slides, so <laughs> I had to throw it in. Um, so fast forward 16 years and, and think about this. You know, here we are in Orlando where people were first introduced to kind of interactivity and digital television that didn't work, 16 years later, you know, here we are in this multi-screen environment. Where's my screen? It's in my pocket. I mean, how many, how many of you don't have your own personal screen? We all walk around with our own little TV sets these days, which, which by the way, is something, uh, something I want to throw out right now is, you know, we still use these terms that were invented over 100 years ago. I mean, television is a 100-year-old plus term. Um, that, you know, when you sit down in front of your internet-connected screen and you watch some content on that screen that comes from someone like uh, Netflix or Hulu, what is it that you're doing? Are you viewing television? You're consuming content? You know, I, I would challenge all of you who are pioneers in this business in one way or another to think about the words that we use today. You know, we like words. We made up videonomics, you know, the economics of video. But the, the word television, uh, you know, I would, I would challenge you all to say, what are we going to call this world going forward? And, and maybe there's some, some new moniker we apply to it that's not a 100-year-old kind of, kind of term. So maybe start tweeting this. You know, we, you know what, what should we call it? Put the, the conversation out. 
And maybe at cocktails tonight, somebody will figure out a new name to call this industry. So fast forward 16 years, it's a pretty crazy world we live in. Let me give you just a little, a little background about videonomics. Um, you know, as many of you in this room know, I've been to uh, past events that I've produced called iMedia and before that Digitrends. I, sort of, I, I got kind of events in my DNA. But in 2007, I started a company called Pop Tent um, that married content producers, independent content producers with brands, and Pop Tent's the conduit in between. Today we have 65,000 filmmakers producing content for major brands. But during that time, we, we started doing uh, dinner events with clients, and we would uh, invite several people in just to talk about the world of video and try to help our clients, which are Fortune 500 brands, to understand how the world is changing and how they need to adapt. And these conversations at dinner turned into, we would bring guest speakers in, and we found that there was really, they, they were just so hungry for information, we started to put together a little bit more of a program for them. And last year, we started calling these events Videonomics, because all of the conversation was about the new economics of video. So we did regional events, and this, uh, this picture that you see here is one that we did in Dallas, thanks to our friends at Media West, all of our production team here that's Dallas-based that does business with the Cowboys, put us up on the big screen at Cowboys Stadium uh, last year, which was a big thrill for everybody. So thanks, you guys. Um, so the, about the middle of last year, we said, that, you know, this is a brand that has legs. We think that, you know, the, the event business that we spun Videonomics out of the Pop Tent Company, and we brought in uh, some partners, some friends of mine that I've known for quite a long time. Um, one of them is Alan Gerson. Alan, you raise your hand here. It's part of the Videonomics uh, partnership. Uh, Alan and I first met in the 80s when he was the director's, uh, director of standards and practices at NBC. He has, basically, he was the censor at NBC during the Saturday Night Live days of the, this is the early 80s, right? So get, get with Alan tonight. He'll tell you some fabulous stories about what really went on there. But Alan and I have been partners across Digitrends and iMedia for a long time, and it's great to bring him in. Um, Mike Cook. Mike is the, uh, the CEO of DMG uh, worldwide. When I first met Mike, he's one of the foremost uh, event producers in, in the event business. He really knows the event category, and he's a partner with us in this. Another one is our own Jeff Cole here, who you hear from a little bit, who runs uh, the Center for uh, the Digital Future at USC. So really happy to have these guys as partners in this business that are, are helping us define what the future of video is going to be, and how we facilitate this conversation for all of you. Because really, that's, that's our job, is not to stand up here and tell you what's happening, but to allow you uh, to interact and converse and tell us how we facilitate the conversation for you. Um, so you know, what I'd like to do right now is, you know, one of the, the key benefits of coming to Videonomics is the relationships that you're going to make here and the conversations that you're going to have outside of this room um, and not only today and tomorrow, but ongoing. You're gonna, make, you're gonna meet some new people, you're gonna create some new relationships that are gonna carry forward into the future that'll help you overcome some of the barriers that, that your business is facing today. So everybody take just one moment, say hello to the people at your table. If you, you know, find somebody to meet that you haven't met yet. Take, one, take 60 seconds and say hello to somebody. This is, this is our social media part of the event right now. <laughs> Every time I do this, they just keep going. <clears throat> OK. OK, ladies and gentlemen. Wait. Well, you guys don't need a lot of encouragement with this, do you? <clears throat> They're pretty good at this interactive stuff. OK, thanks. I'm going to hurry up and get off the stage here so Michael Hayes can come up and tell you some important things.
But um, I, I want to make just uh, you know, a few comments about what we see are the driving forces of, that, of, of videonomics. And, and first of all, it's you know, the creation of video. And what, you know, when you think about it, I mean, we're creating video on the fly right here. It was edited last night, and we showed it to you this morning. You know, the ability for people to create really rich content in full motion sight and sound is, you know, is a, still a pretty new thing. And when you think about it, it's sort of like learning to play an instrument, where, where, where you know, people could pick up a guitar and learn to strum it and play music and create something really artful and, and shareable, is something that now people are doing with cameras and being able to produce full motion sight and sound in a really artful way. And, and that, that was an art form that was only available to a very select few people that had access to the, the kind of equipment necessary. This is, a, this is a revolution for us. It, it really is that independent creators um, you know, can not only create, but they can distribute. It's, it's one of the driving forces of videonomics. Smart TV. By the way, that's ba back to the whole thing about television. Is like, you know, you, th is this the best we can do? Is call it smart TV? <laughs> I mean, we can come up with some better term for what that screen is, is in our, our homes today. I mean, smart TV really implies that the TV that happened before was pretty stupid. In fact, you know, people did disparage television, didn't they? It was, they called it the idiot box, uh, the boob tube. Now it's a smart TV. Um, I think that we're all smart enough to come up with something a little different than just a, a smart TV. But this is the driving forces of videonomics, is all of this content coming forth, this sort of, you know, what, is, it, is it merging or, it, or is it a collision of industries between television and digital and mobile and everything else, this whole big blender of, of video, video content and how buyers buy and sellers sell across these screens are all things that we're going to be grappling with and discussing and hopefully figuring out how to move ahead into the future so that this industry is able to, um, to adapt some new standards, some new ways of buying and selling, creative units, all these things that need to be figured out. That's a driving force of videonomics. Um, mobile, uh, um, you know, we're, I have a 14-year-old daughter who's growing up watching television, watching content on a pad, and when you, you, know, you think about it, these are, she, does, she doesn't realize how remarkable that is to the rest of us that that's happening. That's just her life, and, and that's, that's where the world is headed, and that is the driving force of videonomics. Anybody see the new, uh, the April issue of Wired? Um, you, you, you ought to pick it up if you haven't, or read it online. Um, it's the new rules of the hyper-social, data-driven, actor-friendly, super-seductive platinum age of television. Um, it's a pretty insightful series of articles that are all about the, this, this new age of TV and how data-driven it is. Um, you know, w w for years, we've been relying upon you know, the Nielsen families to tell us what we were watching on television and how much it should cost. And the metrics around how we value content today are changing dramatically. And, and, and a lot of it's driven by social media. Uh, you know, the, the value of the Twitter conversations that are the halo effect around a television program are, are now having some currency value. Is, is, and, and we're seeing new technologies that are measuring the social media buzz that then is being applied towards the value of that content that was produced. This is a wild, wild world, and it's going to be very difficult for us to all figure it out um, and, and decide what really the metrics and the currencies are. And that's a driving force of videonomics. Uh, another, another part of this ecosystem is brands as media companies. I mean, Red Bull, just amazing. I mean, a, you know, a caffeinated drink, an uh, energy drink, becomes a media company in this whole new world of video of ours. Um, I, you know, I would dare say that their media property today, you know, may be a bigger asset than, than their power drinks. I'd imagine it is. I mean, and think of the lengths that they go to, <laughs> to dropping people from space, my gosh, to, 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 to gather an audience. So now we have, we have brands that are uh, usurping the traditional boundaries of media 
and, and gathering their own audiences. And, and how does that play into the whole videonomics ecosystem when brands are creating audience? It's no longer that interruptive advertising experience, but it's come experience my content. In fact, you know, watch this guy fall all the way out of space <laughs> and see how many people want to view that. Um, the, more examples of, of driving forces of videonomics is brands as content producers. And, and this is off of uh, the, the Google um, you know, highest ratings of their ads uh, in, the, in the previous month. So number one is the Pepsi ad. It, it, and now they call it an ad, but you know, it, it, just, it used to be a viral video, but it, it's an ad. So I guess Google and YouTube were all part of this, of this ruse, if you will. Uh, it, it, anybody not seen this? I mean, don't be afraid to say if you have. Michael, I'll show it to you later. It's really funny. <laughs> but it's Je Jeff Gordon takes a car salesman out for a spin in a Camaro, and it's absolutely hilarious. But what got us all to watch it in, in the first place was that we didn't know if it was real or fake. And then, you know, as the views pile up, uh, eventually Pepsi says, well, of course it was fake. We wouldn't give this guy a heart attack. The liability would have been too great. But 34 million views later, 34 million people, 34 million views at least, I don't know how many people, but seen 34 million times that, that, that consumers chose to watch that content. It wasn't content that was landed on them. They actually wanted to see it. That's a driving force of videonomics. You know, how do we play in this world when brands are becoming content engines themselves and doing these kinds of smart things that are building their own audience? This is, this is a very interesting phenomenon that's really, when you think of it, is brand new. It's just brand new. Um, we have a video, Rick. Rick is my alter ego in the back room that takes care of the video that will play any moment now. Happy Valentine's Day. Thanks. Oh, Ducky. It's perfect. No way. Dude, we had the same idea. Really? Yeah. I got custom artwork for Kaylee, too. Look, we're dancing. Send the right gift this year. Visit myMMs.com slash vday and get 15% off the perfect gift. Here comes the airplane. Ew. Valentine's Day advertisement? You know, what is this? This is a, a, a video that was released by M&Ms on Valentine's Day and just in a very short amount of time, 1.5 million views. You know, how do you stack that up against an ad buy that you do on TV? That's what major brands are dealing with today, and that's what videonomics is all about. Go ahead, Josh. <laughs> there he goes. By the way, everybody, in the back of the room, Josh Messenger. Um, round of applause for this man. You can wave, Josh. Do that. So uh, Josh and I have a long, uh, a long history together working across Digitrends and iMedia, and he's come to help us run Videonomics and has really put together uh, the content that you're going to enjoy for the rest of today and tomorrow. So Josh, great job and terrific working with you again. Appreciate it. So listen, I've spent enough time up here, but I mean, geez, 1.5 billion views and growing. Uh, this is the first of, of some 50 videos now. The world's changing, and it's changing fast, and it's changing right in front of our eyes. And all of you are here to figure it out, and all of you are pioneers in this. And I congratulate you and thank you for being here. And right now, I want you to uh, welcome our host, um, who is Michael Hayes. He's the president of Digital Worldwide uh, for Initiative. Um, he's one of, one of the main voices in this whole videonomics world today. He's been a key advisor for us in developing the content and the agenda and figuring out what it is, that, that, you know, the conversations and the issues that we all have to deal with. And he's going to be your host for the next two days to help you navigate through this and make sense of the conversations and moderate as well. So everybody, please welcome Michael Hayes. Mm -hmm. 